Picture this, in urban park, a red brick colonnade, a girl having a chat with a bush. What do they all have in common? They're about to star in our little Photoshop tutorial. Grab your aesthetic coffee mug and buckle in because today we're pulling back the curtain on how to create this architectural illustration that looks so good that maybe you'll have to put it as the cover of your next portfolio. And the best thing is that you won't have to go through hours of tutorials or learn the latest AI prompt to learn how to do it. Although we do have some more AI videos coming soon. And I'll also touch on some key features I normally use in Photoshop to get this look that you're probably not using. Now for this illustration, we will be using a couple of our resource packs, but just for this video, I have some free versions where you can download each of these packs with no strings attached. You probably won't find all of the assets inside since it's just a demo, but it will be enough to follow along with our tutorial. Now, if you do want to download the complete versions of these packs, I'll leave a link down below where you can find them. Creating these packs is a way in which we can keep creating free videos like these for you guys. So in advance, thank you for downloading these beautiful, beautiful packs. And now the first thing that we will do is open our illustration in Photoshop. If you have a base file in SketchUp or any 3D program of your choice, you can just export a simple line drawing. Since we'll be doing all of this inside of Photoshop, there's actually no need to export it with fancy shadows or textures. A simple line drawing will do. Now, since we're doing a conceptual illustration, I would recommend taking some time to think about the point of view you're exporting. If necessary, you might want to simplify and try to conceptualize your image. Now, this might seem obvious to some, but when we're creating conceptual illustrations and the keyword here is conceptual, we want to portray an idea and an overall feeling of an architecture proposal. We don't want to aim for reality, realistic perspective, texture, lighting, or any of those things. Remember, if this is a conceptual illustration, if everything matches and makes sense like a real photograph, you're probably doing something wrong. Now, for my specific case, my main point of view is a red brick colonnade that serves as a main point of attraction in an urban park proposal. I want to highlight the colonnade as well as the variety of spaces, trees, and feelings. This type of image is something that I would present in an architectural competition along with some detailed floor plans and sections. Later on in the process, you would create something maybe like this render right here, but staying conceptual in our style gives them more room for interpretation on the part of the viewers and makes them complete the rest of the image. And just in case you're wondering, this realistic render right here was done using AI. Now, once we've jumped into the Photoshop universe, you can start adding your vegetation. To this image, I'm using the conceptual trees pack more because again, I wanna steer away from this image resembling anything too real. And conceptual trees help me emphasize that idea. I made sure to use varied trees, but not so varied that it didn't look like a man-made park. Although all of these look nice, a park is usually designed by a landscape architect that repeats many trees and vegetation to create patterns, lines, visual cues, defining heights, etc. So I decided to leave out many of the trees and just use the same ones along with the whole image. Depending on the project and the image, repeating many trees can look interesting and go with our image style. I would also import some bushes from the same pack to define the scale and also give a little bit of that illustration look. An important step is defining the horizon line. Although we are not necessarily looking to have an accurate perspective, I do want to create a background tree line that can contrast with the colonnade. So I created a new layer, placed it underneath everything else, and created a rectangular selection just over the horizon line. Next, with the conceptual tree brushes, I painted in some trees in a random order just to feel as if there were more trees in the background. Next, I also wanted to define the ground level, so with the inverse selection that we previously made, I created a new layer and painted it white. Now, for the ground, I didn't have any paths previously designed. I selected the polygonal lasso tool and drew some quick paths all around. You can refine the selection by hitting the Q button and painting in the paths or erasing unnecessary paths. As soon as I have my path, I create a new layer and paint the path with the color white. How many times have I said path in this video? I knew I wanted to create an array of paths that went in different directions. I also knew I wanted one main path to go from one corner to the center, therefore leading our eye to the red brick colonnade. These are composition tips that will come in handy in situations like this. Thank you, Frank Ching. Now, I'll open the blending options in the ground layer and go to color overlay. I'll select a green color and adjust it to the tone I like the most. I'll do the same for the path layer. 
I decided to add a light blue color to the path so we can reflect the color of the sky. Here I can always go back and adjust the tree position if any of it seems weird or off place in relation to the path and ground. With this amount of trees, this can get crazy really fast, so always group your layers and if you want some bonus points, color coat them as well. As I always say, organize your layers. Next, we're going to create a new layer. Think of this as the shy one of the party. It's going straight to the back. We're going to dress it in white and play around with the blending options. Then we will select our gradient overlay option and select a similar color to the blue path. This is going to be our sky. Now for our actual building, we're going to select it and add some color and texture to it. So we'll open the blending options and select color overlay. We'll select the red that we're looking for and next we'll go to pattern overlay. Here I'll overlay the brick texture I have from our pattern pack. This specific one is included in the free pack that you can download below. Next you will scale the texture until it fits the image appropriately. Now the cool thing about this is that we can always go back and change this. While we're on the same topic of textures, let's go back to our ground layer and turn on the pattern overlay. This time we'll select the pattern to overlay onto our base color. I selected a concrete texture to make it seem like kind of a grass texture, it kind of works. You want to adjust the scale and opacity so it looks just right. Now to top off this image, I'll use the people in our latest educational pack and import them into our image. I wanted my main focus to be on the girl interacting with a flower bush in the background. I placed more kids and teachers in the middle ground and background but not too much. And voila, our final image. I'm half tempted to sprinkle maybe some After Effects magic, maybe even serenade you with sound effects, but I fear our video might take on the runtime of Scorsese film, so let's leave the video like this for now. So again, if you want to create a similar image, you can download a free version of the packs used in this video in the link down below. But if you're one of those whole package kind of people, you might want to stroll over to our resource library. Everything's hanging out there waiting for you to grab them. 